I got bored, so I decided to launch a SaaS app and monetize it in one week. This is how it went. So I attempted to do a SaaS startup in one week and failed miserably. Let's talk about why and what I learned from the process. So the idea originally sprang up from a couple of comments that I've seen on indie hackers from other people doing the same thing or something similar. Basically, create a very small time frame to start a small SaaS app and grow it into whatever you can grow it into. I think still, even after the experience that I've had, that this is a good idea. I think it's cool to kind of challenge yourself to learn as fast as possible and to kind of fail fast because at least for me, I tend to suffer from kind of perfectionism and that can be very, very dangerous towards progress. If you're constantly focusing on having the perfect thing figured out before you actually like release anything, then you're never going to release anything. That was kind of a key part of one of my favorite books on startups, which is The Lame Startup. I'll um, leave an affiliate link in the description, but basically the whole idea behind it is iterate as quickly as humanly possible and fail fast. The idea basically being if you're going to create something that people aren't going to buy, you wanna spend as little time as humanly possible on that. If your product is bad, you wanna find out before you spend a year and a half building out that product. If you've got changes that you wanna make, then you want to do those changes as early as humanly possible in that project. So let's dive into the actual doing of the one week SaaS project. So on day zero, I basically dove into the planning of it. I sat in a chair over there and basically wrote down my idea for this startup in a moleskin journal. The idea was fairly simple and that's why I thought that I could get it done in a week. I wrote out all of the different things that I would need on a very, very like macro scale. I didn't really think about the particulars in this stage. I just basically planned out exactly what I wanted, what pages I wanted, what they would in general look like, and a little bit about branding. Then I wrote out the whole process of the week. What am I going to do on each and every day? Again, from a high level. I'm only repeating the fact that it's from a high level because that's going to be important here in a second. So after I got done with that, day zero was done. I told myself I am only going to code from day one to day seven. I started the project on Friday and I wanted to finish the project on the next Friday, probably when this video goes out. So day one begins. I get the basic flow of the website done. Basically, I used React Router to allow myself to use a nav bar at the top of the page to click from one page to another. I'm going to show kind of what the project looks at this point, but I'm not going to talk about the specifics about the project because I am going to finish it eventually. We'll get to that in a second. So day one essentially was just spent doing that. The whole idea behind it was let's have a really, really ugly page that has the basics working. Day two is where things start to get a little hairy. So day two, I started working on user authentication. I wanted to use Firebase for user auth and user information, and I wanted to use Stripe for all things payment processing. I thought that because I had used the Stripe payment processor in the past, and I had used Firebase in the past, and both of them were fairly easy and straightforward, I could combine the two very easily. That was not the case. I struggled and struggled and struggled, especially with the JavaScript SDK for Firebase. I don't know why, I just, every bit of that confused me and I never really got it to the point that I'm probably going to spend a fair bit of time after this video goes out just studying all things Firebase because it is very useful to know. So I'm going to kind of brush up on that, but that, that caused a lot of issues in day two. I started working on a little bit of the payment processing on day two, but most of that was in day three when things really started to go wrong. Day three, I hit an absolute rut. Essentially, this is when all things went wrong. I just basically could not get any like progress done. I was able to get some of the payment processing work on uh, to work on Stripe, and I was going. I was able to get all of the user authentication to work on Firebase, but for some reason I could not figure out how to essentially store 
aspects of the checkout from Stripe in the user information database, which is kind of important because you want to know which users have paid and which haven't. You want to be able to provide links to change the subscription or cancel it. And you know, basically that, that that's like incredibly important to the entire project. Day three was essentially spent just spinning my wheels on that. It was phenomenally frustrating. And this is kind of like the latter part of the downhill like spiral that I took after that. Day four through six, I can basically summarize together. My wife got sick on day four, so I took care of the kids pretty much all day, day four. I got sick the night of day four when I had planned on pulling an all-nighter basically to kind of catch up. Day five, I spent coding, but I was at this point so far behind that, you know, the, the stress kind of got to me and I was basically developing things just on the fly. And that's fine for most of the hacky projects that I work on, like for my malware reverse engineering core, like uh, series that I'm doing, perfectly fine to do, but not for something that's going to go public. So basically the anxiety got to me and I was like, okay, I need to take a step back. I need to go on a walk. And I went on a walk and I came back and it was still the exact same thing. Normally walks help me quite a lot. So after basically I got feeling better, I pulled an all-nighter uh, on the night of day five, morning of day six, did not get any sleep at all last night. And I've been working basically nonstop all day today on this project. Now, basically yesterday, I thought that there was still a chance that I could pull this off. Today, I've got the user authentication working. I've got the entire payment process working, but there are just some bugs that make it unusable. And the reason why I haven't basically given the specifics of this project yet is I am going to finish it and I'm going to release it and there's going to be payments and it's going to be great and it's going to look cool. It's not gonna happen tomorrow and it's probably not gonna happen next week. This is when I started to have the realization and I, I kind of started to do some introspection and I was like, okay, why am I actually doing this? Why am I doing this challenge? The whole purpose of the challenge is basically to force yourself to accelerate the learning process in order for you to really push yourself to your limits and learn new things. I had never used Firebase and Stripe together before. I had never really thought about the intricacies of releasing a public app. I had never dealt with the kind of authentication problems and the kind of security problems that you have to deal with um, with a public app. I actually tweeted about this at one point during the week. I think it was on day four or five. I looked back at my code and I was like, oh my gosh, I am exposing so much like critical data through the front end. Like you could literally look in the console and, and read it or you could look in the, the JavaScript debugger and read it. And I was like, I, I have not been paying enough attention to the security of this. And to my defense, I normally do that at the end, but basically I just thought to myself, let me, let me go ahead and poke around at it, see what I can kind of find out. And it was like immediate. I was like, oh my gosh, okay. So that's one of the shortcomings of trying one of these challenges, like the one week SaaS challenge. If you're not really good at developing web apps, things are going to start getting pushed to the side. One of the things that got pushed to the side was I told myself I was going to edit the vlog every single day. I did it on day one, and after that, essentially coding took up all of the time. And I was so frustrated that I couldn't even focus on video editing or even production. I didn't record past, I think, day two. So what did I learn? Web applications are hard. Public web applications give you a lot of anxiety because you're like, okay, I'm going to like show this off to the world. Like people are gonna actually see this and I want it to be good. The idea behind one week SAS or one month SAS or you know, kind of the time-based challenges is good and there are good aspects of it. But one of the things that I have obviously become comfortable with is not releasing when you said that you were going to release. It's kind of like the upload schedule for my channel. Basically, you need to realize that the whole purpose of the challenge is not necessarily just to release a product. The whole purpose of the challenge is to accelerate your learning and to force you into kind of uncomfortable positions so that you can learn faster and you can fail faster. And once that product does come out, 
it happens way faster than if you just kind of took your time and just let it come out whenever, or basically let it come out whenever you thought it was perfect. So I'm still going to release this as way faster than I ever would have. It's probably going to be the, within the next month or two, depending on what other projects I pick up. I'm not in a huge hurry anymore because I've gotten the results that I wanted to from the one week says I didn't release anything and I'm not making any money off of it. I think I'm actually losing like 50 bucks a month or something like that with like hosting and everything else. But the whole purpose of it was to teach and I learned the whole purpose of it was to code and I wrote a lot of code. The whole purpose of it was to put me into awkward positions with new technologies that I wasn't familiar with, and holy crap, I did that. So that's why I failed, and that's why I'm okay with it. If you're working on something similar and you kind of feel like that you're treading water, don't worry about it. Just learn. If that's all you get out of it, then that's a whole hell of a lot. That's pretty much it. Um, I'll be kind of releasing more information about you know what I'm building and when it's going to be released and stuff like that on my Twitter. Feel free to follow me there at Valhalla underscore dev. Um, otherwise, just kind of subscribe to the channel, like and ask questions in the comments. I'm an open book about this kind of stuff. Um, so feel free to ask questions and take it easy. Peace.